Now today we are looking at the Works deck by Card Cuts. If you do not know who Card Cuts is, they're also who made Oblique Playing Cards and a bunch of others. And if you don't know, Oblique Playing Cards is literally right over there in my top three decks of playing cards, which I'm going to go into later in another video. But for now, I just want to let you guys know that seriously, Card Cuts is amazing. They have amazing playing cards, and that's why I'm reviewing them today. So thank you to Card Cuts for sending me this deck. And if you like deck reviews, that's what I do every single Wednesday here on the channel. So subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notified when all of my deck reviews pop up. I actually had two today, this one and Darren Brown playing cards, which is a super cool story of it. But you're here for the works deck. So let's get into this deck review as you subscribe and ring the bell right now. Now this deck had a lot of nostalgia for me. When you're looking at this tuck box, you're gonna see that it has all these interlocking different gears and things like that. And I made it things with those when I was little all the time. So this is super cool for me to be able to see. And then this really cool dark gray, it just has a really cool design on the front with the red and the green. And you'll also notice that all four of the different pips are in those, those corners. You have clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. Now the sides and top are all blank. The back simply says works. I do wish that would have been bigger and in the middle, but that's just a personal preference of mine. And then on the bottom you have some ad copy for card cuts. Now I do wish they would have made that word works a little bit bigger, a little bit more vibrant, and I wish they would have done a little bit more with this tuck box. Personally it reminds me of once again of the oblique deck. It's really cool on the front. And then when you start looking at the other side, I'm like, this could have been so cool, but why did you guys, like, I just feel like it's missing something. Do I think it's a super dope freaking front of the tuck box? Heck yes. But the rest of it is a little bit lacking. Now the inside of the tuck box is all completely blank, so let's take a look at the cards. So first we're going to take a look at the number cards. Now what you'll notice is that they are not quite straight on. They're a little bit diagonal, so you actually get to see the side of the pip, which is really cool. They're done with no bottom to the actual spade pips and they're all one ways. So as you'll see, they're all going to be one way designs. Every pip is going to be facing upwards. They have the gray with a little bit of a green for the black cards and the numbers have all been redone and so have the indices because they neither, they don't have the back, like that bottom part either, which is again, I think is really cool. Then here are your diamonds. Again, they're gonna have that back, and uh, instead of having green like the black ones do, they're gonna keep their red. Now the only problem I have with this partially is the difference between the spades and the clubs, and the spades and the hearts. Because when you look at it, you're gonna realize that they're basically the same thing, just upside down, right? So that might make it a little bit difficult when you're actually trying to play games or look at something and you accidentally have the card flipped upside down, you're like, oh shoot, which one is this? Right, so like you'll be able to see based on the color, but at the same time, the actual pip looks exactly the same, which is gonna be a little bit harder when you're doing certain things. Now, I'm not sure if you wanted this, but here is a fan of the number cards just so you can see what it looks like. Next, we're gonna look at the duplicate jokers. Super, super cool cards. I actually really like these. Um, they have red and black on them, which I think is kind of odd. That does make them duplicate though. Again, of course, one way, like the whole deck, and stars can only be one way. So I do really like this deck, and I'd really like these jokers, but I don't really feel, I don't feel like they, like a star really fits with the really like kind of rustic you know, grinding gears type of theme. I don't really know where a star comes into that, but they do look really cool. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, these court cards surprise me. It's not where I expect, expected these to go, because these court cards really are just the J, Q, and K done in all the same things that we've seen before, which I think is really cool. And you'll also see that they have the actual pip on each of them. It's so like even just taking the queen is right there. You have the jack right there, etc. So all of them are going to have their own on it. Now, next, I'm only going to show you the spades and diamonds. Why is that? Why am I only going to show you two of them? Well, it's because they're all basically the same thing. Um, here's what your diamonds look like. And once again, this if you're going to compare them side by side, it's just basically the same thing, but red and have different indices. So if you're gonna look at the difference between the king of clubs and the king of spades, you're gonna realize that there's only two differences. The indices in the corners and the thing I talked about before where it's right here. That is literally the only difference. So I wish that there would have been more of a contrast because although it does look really cool, if I'm gonna, I just like taking cards around everywhere. So if I'm, I'm doing, I'm just shuffling the cards up and I'm just doing some cardistry when I'm working in front desk at my college 
and someone's like, hey, Elijah, can you do a quick trick for me? If they pull out a king of clubs or any other court card, they're not going to know what on earth they're looking at. So it's just going to take them longer. Sight forces are basically impossible with this deck. But does it look freaking cool? Yes, this might be one of my favorite court cards visually. Now I'm going to show you one of the two ad cards up front. So this is the, of course, normal card cuts ad card. Now this is going to be a little bit weird because no normally I will go through the aces in a bit of a normal way. Like I do it in the same way that it comes in the deck, mostly. So normally I go diamonds and then clubs and then hearts and then spades because for the most part that's what my favorites are. Now that's not what my favorites are this time so I'm not going to go in that order. This time my least favorite is of course usually still, like always, the diamonds. Now does it look cool? Yes, but since the tops and sides are rounded, it just doesn't look as much like a diamond, which I do have a little bit of a problem with. Um, next being the Ace of Spades. Now, reason being Ace of Spades is once again, it doesn't have that bottom to it. Do I like that? I'm actually starting to feel it a little bit more. I'm starting to like that. But once again, it doesn't look like a normal Ace of Spades. And then the other part is, it's not anything above and beyond what most other Ace of Spades are, right? So if you don't have like the Ace of Spades and the other three Aces, and it should be like evolving. And this one is like, did the same thing, so that was just a little bit hard for me. Um, next being the Ace of Hearts. Um, Ace of Hearts is usually my second favorite. If it's not the same, like if the Ace of Spades is the same as the rest of them, Ace of Hearts usually is my favorite. And once again, it's super cool, but it's just not anything... I feel like it could have been done a little bit different. And then the one that's most easily recognizable in this deck is the Ace of Clubs, which is why it is my favorite, because you don't have to wonder which one is it. So. That is why that one is my favorite. And now, for the part that I've been really waiting to show you guys, is one of the ad cards. Now, I'm really excited about an ad card. Yeah, I actually am. Um, here's why. It's the back design without the background. Never seen this done before. So this is the back design without the background. So this is one of the ad cards. And on the other side is going to be the back design. So it's both of them. So I'll show them to you back to back. So even when you're looking at them both, you'll see it's literally the same thing except for without the gray background, which I think is such a cool idea. And especially since the colors are so similar, like there's not a ton of contrast between the two, this is gonna be really nice for when you're actually trying to show somebody look up, like, what, what does the back design look like? I can't quite tell. Well, let me just show you this, bam, right? There's just the one card that has everything but that background, so you can see all the intricate details that they put in this deck, which is super, super cool. Now, once again, this is not the only thing that goes into a deck, right? The only thing that goes into a deck isn't just the visuals. You want to know how it feels, how it pharaohs, what it looks like when it fans. I'm going to show you everything and should you buy it or not. So first, let's see if this deck can pharaoh. And we're going to go from bottom to top. And bottom to top, literally every other. So let's check top to bottom. And top to bottom, we see that it pharaohs every other. Yeah, so no worry when it comes to pharaohing. Um, here's what it looks like on the faces when they're fanned. And then this is what the back design looks when fanned. So although I like the back design, fans are not going to be super fun really either way. Um, the reds are a little bit more, like have a little bit of a deeper red when you're looking at the reds. So the, and the numbers and indices are a little bit custom. So that does make face, like face fans look a little bit more fun. But the back design has just a medium white border. And most of the time it's just a gray background. So there's not going to be anything above and beyond like super fun about this fan. Now, what does it feel like, right? You want to know how this deck feels. So if you're going to spring it, what's that going to feel to you, right? I can't hand this deck through the screen. I wish I could. I really do. I wish I had some magical way of being like, I wish I could just VR it through the screen so you could feel this deck. Now, one way you could do it is just pick it up in the description below. So, and it doesn't matter if you're from US or not because there's two different websites. So you can get the deck even faster, which is super cool. So if you live in the US, you have a great place so you can buy it and not have to wait so long to get the cards. And if you don't live in the US, you don't have to ship it from the US, so you don't have to wait as long. It's honestly super cool that they've done that. So besides that, here's how I let you know how it feels. There's two ways I let you know. The thickness and actually how it feels. Now the thickness is what I usually go with first. So it's thin, middle of the line, and thick. And then how it feels is buttery, middle of the line, crispy, and really stiff. Now, first, of course, is going to be the bottom one that I just showed you, which is how thick the deck is. Now, it's middle of the line to thin. Honestly, it's probably just a normal stock deck, but 
because of how it was pressed, it got a little bit thinner, and once broken in, it's definitely gonna feel like a thinner deck, which I really appreciate. If you're gonna talk about how a deck feels, though, it's gonna be this top one, which is buttery middle line, crispy, and stiff. Now, this deck, is it stiff? Heck no. Is it super crispy? No, yes, it's somewhere, it has a great bit of both, it really does. It's not like middle of the line where it's just like, eh. It's middle of the line because it has a good amount of buttery and a good amount of crispy. Now here, like, it, you can still spring these cards and have, like, you, there's no effort to it. It just does it on its own. Like, even if you're going to do something, like, under pressure, it just glides. But at the same time, if you're going to try to do something like backdrop or hot shot, once again, this deck is going to be super easy and just snap right out of the deck. So it has a good amount of both. Once again, as I said before, card cuts prints the best cards. Honestly, it's really hard for me to, like, when you hear about card cuts and you feel their cards and then you start to reconsider USPCC, which is where Descendants playing cards is going to end up printing through, but, like, maybe I might print Descendants playing cards V2 through card cuts. Like, honestly, I don't. <laughs> it's unreal. If you guys love cool cards and how they feel, if you're like, oh my word, I want a deck that feels good, just buy any card cuts deck, honestly. I have not felt a single, a single one, a singer? I don't know what that is. I have not felt a single one that has not felt fantastic in my hands. But you also want to know, should you buy it, depending on who you are, right? There's different types of people who should buy different types of cards. One is, are you a magician? If you're a magician, I think you could go either way with this one. The problem is, it looks great on the back design, but those court cards are going to be really hard to distinguish for a spectator. And there's nothing above and beyond when you're doing something. Like, it has duplicate jokers, which are nice. Um, they're all one ways, which can be used in some different magic tricks and magic effects. But the problem is, there's no. it, was, it didn't come in any stack. There's no double backer. There's no blank card, duplicate card, anything like that. No reveals. So, I didn't go anything above and beyond for magic. But excluding the court cards, I don't see why it couldn't be used for magic. Now, if you're a cardist, I could definitely see you picking this deck up. Again, all the faces are custom. Back design is dope. Like a nice border. I think, honestly, I don't see anything against cardistry, once again. But it's not a cardistry deck. No broken border. No super vibrant colors. No circle back, etc. Now, next would be for if you are a card collector, which is where the main part of where I would put this deck. If you're a card collector, one, super dope to... Like, the tuck box is dope, especially on the front. The back design is dope. The faces are dope. Honestly, it's a dope deck. If you think, yeah, I know, I use dope a lot. It's okay. Not like that. Keep your head out of the gutters. I use the word dope a lot. Goodness gracious, what's wrong with you? So, honestly, this is just a really cool deck. And if you like decks that would either, like, collecting all from one company, like, if you collect all of the peelers or the squeezers, like, all OPC decks or cherry casinos, and another one, is card cuts. So if you like collecting all of them, once again, this is one of the decks. So you want to collect that. Also, if you just like a deck that would look cool on a shelf like that, again, it's going to look cool on there, so you'd want to pick it up. So you don't have to be a collector of a specific thing to be able to collect this deck. Super cool. Now, should we use for gameplay? Probably not. One, it's just hard to distinguish what one thing from another. And two, it's honestly just too nice of a deck, and I wouldn't want people who I know that don't handle cards well be able to handle these cards. Now, is this a hype deck? No, it is not. They definitely put a lot of intentionality and time into this deck, so it is not a hype deck. So, once again, if you want to pick this deck up, you can pick it up in the description below, and I'll leave, like, US versus other places, like, in, so you can see where you should buy it from, so you guys can get your cards even faster and at a cheaper price. Once again, you're welcome. So, thank you to Card Cuts for sending me this deck, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This is Card Perfect. Signing off. Oh, come on now. You know this is going to top 100. Now, what did I mean by top 100? Those are my top 100 decks right there. I mean, technically, it's like 104 because I have two on top and two over there. Um, but top 100 decks-ish. And I'm going to be doing a live stream showing you all 100 of those decks on my birthday on November 20th. November is going to be an insane month. Wait till the first so you can see all of what's happening because I'm literally putting up, like, a video almost every day. Literally, like, five days a week. It's going to be insane. Five days a week for four... Like, um, there hasn't been a single month for the last two years when I've been uploading on YouTube where I've put up more videos than what I will be in November. If you want to know all of what's coming up, you can check out the Patreon, which I've linked below, where you can get exclusive access and know everything that's coming up 
in the upcoming months about what videos are going to come up. You can vote on which videos you want to see first and so much more. Get exclusive updates on Descendants Playing Cards, the deck I mentioned earlier, which I am creating myself. So seriously, check it out in the description below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This is Cardbird for the second time. Signing off. Peace out, y'all.